When you look at valuations of kind of where Netflix stands today versus maybe a valuation of the components of AT&T that are represented by media, or when you think about the uh, combined Discovery Warner Media, there's a pretty big chasm between those two valuations. And my belief is uh, they, they've built an incredible franchise, and there is a great business in distribution direct to consumer. You've heard me say it before. I don't think it's going to be a business that there'll be six or seven companies that are successful globally, but just a small handful, and it's a race to see who establishes themselves. I believe in 2021, we clearly indicated that HBO Max and what we're able to do on that platform will be one of those. I'd like to see our valuation actually start to edge up to what uh, Netflix is. You know, John, on that note, of course, uh, through last year, after the announcement in May, through the end of the year, your stock underperformed, underperformed against competitors. Since then, by the way, it's been outperforming this last month. But um, were you were you uh, taken aback at all by that? Was there a lack of understanding, do you think, perhaps in part uh, amongst your investor base in terms of the value that you believe you're going to be delivering through this uh, obviously very important transaction? Well, you know, David, it's a good question. I, I think if you go back to May of last year when we announced the transaction, um, at least in my comments and discussions with folks, you know, I made it very clear that we were doing what we thought was the right thing to unlock value for the shareholder uh, for the near and long term. And we understood that there were a lot of moving parts. This is, a, you know, admittedly, to do this and structure it in the right way and avoid things like tax leakage so that all that benefit flows back to the shareholder. There's some moving parts to this deal. And there's some moving parts in restructuring the what I would call remain co at and to make sure that the capital structure is set up properly. I'm not surprised that it went on. I Obviously, in my job, I would have preferred that it didn't and that there was a little bit more stability around it. But I do believe what we have set up in the combination of Warner Media with Discovery, the Remain Co. AT&T and its focus, and the respective capital structures and charters and missions for each of those companies is a very, very compelling value-creating equation. And what I believe we're seeing right now, as you alluded to, as we get closer to the close date, as the uncertainty comes away, as all the questions about whether or not this is going to happen and when it's going to happen, I think we're now seeing investors look at it and say it is compelling. One of the key questions among some of your investors certainly is whether you're going to do it as an exchange offer or a spin, essentially a split or a spin. I know you're not ready to share that decision, but can you at least share some of the thinking behind either one of those? Because they both have their benefits and or potential drawbacks, whether you simply as a div, essentially give a share, to, a, a percentage share of, e, of Discovery, Warner Discovery to each of your shareholders, or actually do an exchange offer whereby you really would end up retiring potentially a good amount of AT&T shares. Yeah, we kept that option open for good reason, because we wanted to assess what the state of the market was as we got closer to the close of the transaction. When we think about going through the dynamics of, of a split, it's, it's what you said earlier, which is we'd like to possibly over time reduce the AT&T share count, and this may be one way to do that. However, it is a very, very large split. It's unparalleled in terms of anything that's been done ever in history. And, you know, that certainly gives me some pause. And we have a very large retail base in the AT&T stock right now as well. And that retail base sometimes isn't quite as deep in some of these issues as the institutional base is. And so, I'm very mindful of the fact that whatever we decide to do, it has to be something that can be clearly communicated so that there isn't confusion in the marketplace and a lot of people carping. One of the things that's guiding us is as we started this, we wanted to do this for shareholder value. Everything we're doing right now is about shareholder value. As you know, to execute a split, especially one of this size, it would require some value leakage to execute that and actually get the shares placed. I'm not sure I'm really a big fan of that value leakage dynamic right now and being second guessed on it. Uh, I'm also pretty interested in moving through this as quickly as we can. There's some advantages to doing a spin in terms of how mechanically it can be done and how much quicker it can be done.